Levers, ramps, and pulleys. Now, in this lecture, we're going to discuss three simple machines known as levers, ramps, and pulleys, and uh, their effect on work. Now, there was this very famous uh, Greek scientist named Archimedes, and you will have heard about Archimedes a couple of times uh, throughout your science education, but he had a phrase. He said, give me a lever and a place to stand, and I can move the world. And he was probably talking a little bit more poetically than uh, a physics teacher is, but in reality, he's right. You could move planets if you had a lever long enough. Well, a simple machine is defined as a device that allows you to trade one characteristic of work. And let me remind you, work is force times distance. And so you can trade force for distance or distance for force. The three simple machines that we're going to look at are levers, pulleys, and ramps. And then uh, there's this idea of the amount of work in. Now work is force times distance, but the work in is the force that you apply to the machine, or the distance that you apply to the machine. And it's very common that I think about where my hand is. And so I spend time going, okay, my hand is applying a force here. That is where work, work in is done. Work out, on the other hand, is uh, the force times distance that you get out of the machine. And the way that I think about it is how much work would you need to be to do if you, if you without the machine, and I've underlined out here to kind of put it together. And so if you didn't have a simple machine, how much force would you be required to do? So the first kind of simple machine that I want to talk about is a lever. And a lever is simply uh, a simple machine that uses a bar or a stick or some sort of rigid object to transfer force by a fulcrum that it pivots on. And a fulcrum is simply a place in which a lever pivots. Now, uh, we can draw a lever as, for example, a rigid bar. And the, the fulcrum is a place in which it pivots. And so it's usually used as a triangle. Fulcrum. Right? And so if I put a very heavy block on one side, for example, to build the pyramids, and then I apply a force on this side. And so my hand is going to go on this side. We take a look, the amount of force required to push down here is the force in. But the distance that my hand needs to travel is the distance in. And that's what I put into the lever. What I get out of the lever is a force in this direction, force out. And the distance that the block travels is known as distance out. And as long as the fulcrum is really pretty much in the middle, you'll see that the distance is about the same in both places and the force is about the same in the both places. But if I change my system so that I have the same rigid bar and I have the same mass. At this point, the amount of force required to pick up that block hasn't changed that much. In fact, it hasn't changed at all. So the force out is exactly the same. But if I move my fulcrum much closer to my block, Fulcrum. Basically, the amount of distance that I get out of the deal is very, very small. It will only pick it up a little bit. Distance out. But if I look on the side that I have to apply, what's cool is I don't need to apply that much force. I apply a very small amount of force in because the lever has multiplied by my force. But as a trade-off for getting a multiplication of force, I need to travel over a much larger distance. 
When I take a look at a ramp, I use ramps to basically pick objects up. Now, if I had a very heavy object here, I would know that there's a force pulling down on that object, force due to gravity. And in order to pick it up, I need to apply the same force in this direction. So that's pretty large, but I have to apply it over a pretty short distance. That is the distance out. That is the force out. If I use a ramp though, what's cool is, do I need to apply as much force? No, my force in is pretty small, but what do I need to trade off? I need to travel a much farther distance. In fact, up the hypotenuse. And by definition, the hypotenuse is the longest side in a right triangle. And if you look along the edge of a ramp, you see this triangle. The last type of simple machine that I'm going to discuss is a pulley, which is simply a machine that has cables or ropes or threads threaded over a wheel, or a pulley, that increases the amount of force applied to an object. This allows you to multiply your force or change the direction of your force. For example, an elevator or a well. And let me uh, strike on this, uh, this idea of a well. Have you ever seen very deep wells that have If I look at this as a well, the load would be the bucket of water that you are picking up out of the well. And I don't know about you, but picking up water is hard. In fact, I need to apply a lot of force in this direction in order to pick the water up out of the well. But what happens if I loop it over a wheel can I use the fact that I'm changing the direction to my advantage? In other words, I can apply a force in this direction. This is the force that I need to put in. But the fact that I'm applying it in this direction allows me to use gravity as well. And can I use my body weight, the force due to gravity, in order to help me supply that much force in that direction? And that's where pulleys become very advantageous. Now, pulleys don't necessarily only change the direction of force. They can multiply forces as well. So um, there's this idea of how many times I loop the string through the wheels. And those strings are called support strings. Now, technically, it's the same string over and over and over again. But if I count support strings, I can figure out how much energy or force is required to pick things up. So let's say that I had a 500 Newton block that I needed to pick up. If I did not have a simple machine in order to pick this up with a rope, I would need to apply 500 Newtons, which is a lot of force, and I need to apply it in this direction. That is the force that I would need to put into the system. Well, if I use a rope with a pulley and loop it over a wheel down to my hand, now I haven't changed the amount of force that I need to apply. I've only changed the direction. So now the amount of force that I put into the system is still 500 Newtons, but I've changed its direction to this way. And I can start using my body weight and the force due to gravity to use that 500 Newtons in order to pick me up. Now, in this situation, you get to count how many strings are involved. Now, the one that is in my hand does not count for support strings, right? That one does not count but this one does, and that is one support string. 
Well, let's say that if I changed up the situation a little bit and I started here and I went down one wheel and then back up and over this one again, back to my hand. And this is 500 newtons again. In this case, I have one support string here and one support string here. This one does not count and I have two support strings. What's cool is this allows me to multiply my force. I no longer have to put force in of 500 newtons. Now I can apply 250 newtons, a smaller force. Well, can I keep going? One and then around this loop and then around this pulley, then around this pulley again, back to my hand. In this case, here's my hand, I'm still trying to lift 500 newtons, but now I have number one support string, number two support string, and number three support string. This is three support strings. And I will find that I am not required to put anywhere near as much force in. In fact, I only need to supply 166 newtons of force in that direction, allowing me to pick up really, really heavy things with small amounts of force.